Hey everybody, it's Julie for EllenHudson.com. Welcome to Hello Monday. Believe it or not, I have never actually made one of these kinds of interactive cards and they're really cute. They will collapse flat into an A2 envelope. And when you pull the sides apart, you've got this motion where the magnifying glass is going to pop up from behind the foreground. So it's just really, really fun. I can't stop playing with it. So I'm going to share my maiden voyage of making an interactive wiper card. And I'm going to be playing with some of Lawn Fawn's brand new stamps. It's got all these fun little bugs and I just couldn't resist. Now I did want to suggest before I get started that you make yourselves a template and try it out that way. I'm saving this template because that's one of the reasons why I always had such a hard time trying to make one of these in the past because I just didn't understand how all the pieces came together even though I'd watched videos. <laughs> so now I've already stamped and colored my images uh, and die cut them out. I used Copic markers and I used that Gina K Amalgam Black ink. Anyway, I had that done in, a, in advance because otherwise it would have taken an hour to watch me make this. And that's on high speed. So <laughs> I'm sparing you all that. And I'm going to take one of those five and a half by five and three quarter panels and I'm going to sponge some sky using some Catherine Pooler dye inks and one of those life changing brushes. Now I'm going to set that aside and I'm going to grab the second five and a half by five and three quarter panel. And I want to make sure that the five and three quarter is like the landscape view, right? And then I'm going to grab, uh, this is one of the Essentials by Ellen uh, landscape dies that has the grass in it. And I chose one that is not too curvy because I don't want to have too uh, many hills to try to deal with when I'm putting this together. And then I'm going to grab some more of that Catherine Pooler ink and sponge over the edge of that to give me a nice grassy field there. Now you could use green cardstock if you want to, but I really love the way that looks. Now I marked the back panel with a B so that I don't forget. And then I'm going to rotate this and use a mini scoreboard. And I'm going to score from that short end. I'm going to score at three quarters and then one more time at one and a half inches. So I've got two score marks there. And remember, I rotated my cardstock. I'm working upside down so I could bump it against the bumper there. And then I'm gonna grab my grassy panel. And since I need to put those score lines on the left, on the background, it's gonna be on the right. And on the foreground, it's gonna be on the left. Again, at three quarters and one and a half inches. So you could do all your scoring before you do uh, your ink blending, but then the score lines kind of show up and don't look so pretty in the final result. So I like to do the blending first and then do the scoring. So now I've got my background and I'm going to flip that first fold in a mountain and I'm gonna use my bone folder, my Teflon bone folder there to crease that really well. And then I will valley fold the next score line and use my bone folder there. And then I'm gonna repeat the same process, but in reverse on the, on the left hand side, I wanna make a mountain fold on that first line and then a valley on the second. So you're gonna see here in a minute what I mean and why it was so helpful to have a template <laughs> to make me understand that, oh no, I'm doing the reverse of the folding on each side of these. So it's not gonna be identical. Now I'm gonna pop my foreground here into my mini Misty and then I'm gonna grab a sentiment from this little bug set and I'll have all the names of them down there below. I just, just keep calling them little love bugs because they're so dang cute. Now I wanted to pay attention to where those score lines are on the left. So when I put my sentiment in, I kind of had to think about that and it's hard to see those score lines on camera, but I was using those as a guideline for where I was gonna stamp that sentiment. Then I'm gonna grab my background. I'm gonna hook these two pieces together and where that B is, I'm gonna put some adhesive and then I'm gonna mount the flat side of my foreground to that last three quarter inch flap there, that last section there. And I'll smooth that down. Now I'm not gonna attach the other side. I'm just gonna leave the other side right now open and uh, keep going with building my scene. So I've grabbed one of the branches that I stamped and die cut and I'm just gonna use some mono multi adhesive and glue that where I think it will look good in my scene. And I'm gonna bump that up kind of a little bit higher cause I just kind of want it to look like a branch um, in the background or in the distance. So I'm gonna get that glued in place and then I glued some leaves on there. Now I popped up a couple of the leaves and later in hindsight, that was a bad idea. <laughs> Or at least the one that sits a little bit lower. So anyway, I'll talk more about that later. So I snipped off the excess of the branch and then here you can see I already have the magnifying glass 
die cut twice. Once is stamped and once just plain white. And then I also die cut it from some clear plastic. So this clear plastic is going to get glued on to the back one there. I just used some of that really skinny double-sided sticky tape and then I'm just going to plop that on there. So I'm kind of making like a plastic sandwich, right? And so I'm going to grab the top one. I'm going to do the same thing to the stamped magnifying glass. I'm going to flip that over and get some of that double-sided super skinny tape on there. And then I'll go ahead and pop that onto my magnifying glass. So once that's ready to go, ooh, we can start putting everything else together. So I took some foam tape and I flattened my card and I mounted my little, uh, my big leaf right there. And you got to be careful that the adhesive doesn't cross over onto the back side because you want to glue your card shut. Now, for some reason, my camera is off during this phase, but I took one of the little ladybugs and I put a drop of glossy accents on it. And then I laid my magnifying glass down on top of it and it glued that little ladybug underneath the glass of my magnifying glass. So that's how I got that done. So while that's drying, I've got a piece of cardstock here that's two inches by uh, five 15 sixteenths. I'll have that written all down below in the description. And then I'm going to mark, uh, make a mark there along that long edge at three quarters of an inch. And then I'm going to score and fold diagonally. Well, I didn't actually score it. I just drew a pencil mark so you could see it because I don't think you really need to go over there and score it on your um, scoreboard. Although you could if you really want to. But I just kind of eyeballed it using that score line as a guide. And then I burnished that very well, creased it both ways and burnished it with my Teflon bone folder. You really want that to be able to flip and flop uh, nicely. So now I'm going to take my card here. I'm going to grab that piece that I made and flip it over so that the uh, diagonal of that fold is pressed against that inner uh, scored section there. And so if you just look very carefully and stop the camera if you have to to see what I did, I'm going to pop that flap up and then I'm going to put some tape runner. You could use glue dots or whatever but you're gonna need some really firm glue to go on that little flap and that's gonna hold it there in place. So you can see that that three quarter inch pencil mark that I made, that's showing you how it fits in between those two score lines there. And then I'm gonna pop that up and fold the other corner. Now I didn't actually make any marks on this, I'm just kind of eyeballing it, um, which you can do depending on the angle you want that section to have. Now. Depending on what you're doing, you may want it to angle a different direction. It depends on how long the image that you're going to mount to a uh, plastic arm or clear acetate arm is going to be. So I'm just going to test this now to make sure that it's going in the direction. This is why my template really helped me because I was like, what? I could never get it to go the right way. <laughs> So now I'm ready to mount my magnifying glass and I'm just gonna put more of that skinny tape on the back of my magnifying glass. And I've got this little strip of acetate that I cut to like, it's, I don't know, it's about four inches long and it's a quarter inch wide. I didn't want it too much wider than my magnifying glass handle so that you don't really see it. And because it's clear, you're really not gonna see it that well. Um, it's gonna kind of disappear in the background. But I needed an extension arm for my magnifying glass. So this is gonna get cradled right here into that score line on that mechanism there. And you can tilt it any direction that you want. So I'm kind of messing around here with where I want the bottom of the magnifying glass to show up on the front side and how far I want it to angle. So once I'm happy with that, I'm gonna put some adhesive there and I just kind of coated that whole thing both sides, front and back. You could use some more of that double-sided sticky tape, but my tape runner was right there, so I just grabbed it. And then I'm gonna sandwich that right inside that second diagonal fold there. Like I said, stop the camera if you need to. You wanna make sure that this magnifying glass is not dropping down below the bottom of the card, otherwise it'll peek out in the wrong area. So as you're futzing around with this, and it's gonna vary depending on the shape and the size of whatever it is you're mounting to that plastic arm, extension arm there, that's gonna depend um, on its size. So you wanna make sure that you've got it angled in there so that it won't get caught in the back of the card. And then once everything is where you want it to be, you can go ahead and close the card by adding more adhesive tape to that front flap and securing it to the back of the card. Now, I decided I wanted to add um, a few more leaves in here, so I grabbed another one and I'm just kinda tucking it in there. And 
You'll find, I had another problem. I had to troubleshoot later on. So you'll see how I resolved that later on. So I had lots of errors, but hey, it was my first time, right? <laughs> so as I'm doing this, I'm like, what? Now my magnifying glass is bonking into that leaf on top. So I should not have 3D mounted it. I should have kept it flat because the magnifying glass is bonking into it. So I removed it. I did that off camera, removed the foam tape, and then I just put glue on the back of it and glued it back into place where I wanted it to be. And I'm going to take a couple more of these fun little bugs from the, I think it's your bug deal or it's a bug deal and added those to the front. And there you can see my little worms peeking out there. And then when you have this action, the magnifying glass pops up. But because I taped that that leaf in there, it was catching on the edge. I was like, wow, blast. Now I've got another thing I have to fix. So I decided to grab some clear cellophane tape and I just tucked it in there and covered up the bottom edge of that leaf because no one is going to see that. You, I mean, I had to really look to actually see it. And then that made it slide right over the top of that, no problem. But in hindsight, you might wanna stamp all your images on there just nice and flat and not put anything uh, glued down. So I hope you will give this a try. I've got all the measurements listed down below in the description and have a good time making these wiper cards. I'm not scared of them anymore. Thanks for watching.